this evening I'm going to be um, both going to be talking about Angular and we'll be creating our Ionic application. So um, we'll also touch um, a little bit on the Angular framework as well because um, Ionic does use a couple frameworks such as Angular. And so Angular is just pretty much a platform and a framework for building single page client applications uh, used for HTML and TypeScript. And I don't know who's worked with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before to create a web app, but the process is fairly similar. And you'll see some of the, um, the common stuff that uh, that has with Angular. And so um, instead of JavaScript though, Angular uses TypeScript. And TypeScript just uh, uh, builds on JavaScript, it compiles into JavaScript, so you can write JavaScript code into TypeScript. So in short, it's just JavaScript with more features to it. And um, if you guys uh, were here a few meetups back, um, we had one of our developers, um, Mark, that had a session on TypeScript. So I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, and a little history about Ionic. Um, it was created around uh, 2013, and it was used originally with Ionic or with Angular JS, which was the first version of Angular. And since then, it's uh, compatible with other frameworks such as React. And um, Ionic has released five versions. Yeah, five versions with currently being Ionic version five, which was released earlier this year. And what Ionic is, is it creates a web app because you can also create web apps using the Ionic framework. And with the help of Cordova and Capacitor, you can access the features in native mobile apps, such as the camera, uh, the flash, and also like location features of the phone that the barometer you could use yeah everything yeah. everything that you can access through building no native mobile apps you can use through you can access through ionic all mm -hmm. those apis yeah. and so um let's get started um if you guys have any questions or if i'm going way too fast then um you know feel free to um Tell me um, through, you know, open your mics or you can give me a little chat and some of the other developers here will kind of tell me about it. Okay, so let me show you guys what we will be creating today. Um, actually, um, there's something wrong with, with my app right now. So let me show you guys in a different one. Hold up one second. I'm gonna sign in in my other computer here so I can show you guys what we're gonna be making. Okay, um, can you guys see this? You guys are able to see this? So um, pretty much all we're creating is um, a really simple Ionic app. And what it does, or what it's called is Who's Paying. It's a little fun app that I decided to create. And um, what it does is it, um, Creates, uh, let's see here. Oh, go on. So in here. Joseph, is this on your Mac side or PC side? This is on my PC side. Oh, where did it go? Sorry, guys. Sorry, technical difficulties. Where did it go? Oh. Sorry about this. Um, Thank you. 
All right. While he's, while he's doing that, I'll just uh, kind of give you a little background. So if, if you're familiar with building Angular apps, Ionic is basically building an Angular, Angular app. It's, it's actually the same thing. So, you know, Angular has like a CLI um, where you, it's, it's command line, uh, command line interface. So basically, um, when you create a new project, you do like ANG, and then you, you do all your commands for creating a project, for creating your, your, your components, for creating your uh, modules and, and pipes and all that stuff. So the same thing goes for Ionic. Ionic, you're basically, you're doing Ionic new, which is referencing a new app, a new app and you give it a name um, and it creates the project for you all through the CLI. And it's like a default project that they create. They have three different options when you create. They have like a side menu with the hamburger menu where you can slide. They have a tab, tab uh, where you can create a tab on the bottom. And then they have like a blank, uh, just a blank app that just is, is just one page that you can build off of. And then if you want to add components and pages and you want to add uh, all these other libraries and, and plugins, um, you just use the command prompt and you can add those, add those in. Um, and the one thing I like about Ionic is their documentation is like second to none. Like their documentation is so well written out and it's getting more and more widely used. So if you get stuck on something, it's so easy to just go through. If you've never messed with it too, you can just literally go through the tutorial went step by step and, by the, by the time you're done with the tutorial, you'll have a full app built. Um, you'll have a full app built. So um, I, I encourage you all to look at that no matter what, even depending on what you get out of here. You ready to go, Joseph? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Hello, Johnny. So um, pretty much uh, this app takes in a name. And what it does is you type in a name, let's say Joe. Oops, not that one. Type in Joe. And then let's set that Step in there. And then you add their names on there. Let's do Mark. Add that in there. Let's do Johnny. Johnny. And so it um, it's, uh, saves it into this participants list. And pretty much what it is, is you get the names. Let's say you go and eat out with your friends and you want to have a little fun game and that you wanted to see who's going to be paying for dinner. So what you do is you add the names here, you put them in the participants, and then when you hit choose, you're actually going to get a name back. Mm -hmm. And that's who's paying for dinner. I like that answer. So, <laughs> I'm paid for dinner, I guess. But um, yeah, it's a simple app. Um, if you guys have done to-do lists before, it's uh, fairly similar. So with that, um, let's get started. Let me share my screen again. Okay. Okay. All right, one second. Okay, so first, um, first things first, we're gonna need to make sure that we all have uh, a Node.js installed. So if we actually go to here on Ionic and we on ionicframework.com and we can get started. I don't see it right here. I don't. Uh, I just see Visual Studio. Can you share your whole desktop? Yeah. Uh, there we yeah. go. Got it. Okay. So in here, um, so go back and uh, on, our, on our main Ionic site. So if you hit started, then it will show us how to install um, um, Ionic in our, in our desktop. So first it says here, first we need to install Node.js. So if you guys don't have Node.js yet, I suggest that you install it. If you click here, it'll send you over to the nodejs.org and it'll, I'll have you download these files. Um, we want to download the most used or the yeah, most used because it's most used. But if you guys have already downloaded that, then we can continue on with creating our app. So in here on the document, it says to do npm install 
G Ionic CLI. So in, in, in this uh, command here, we are going to be installing the Ionic CLI so we can use Ionic commands. So what we need for this is we need Visual Studios, which will be our code editor. And let me show that. And so uh, does everybody, whoever's following, have Visual Studios up? And this is a, a clean slate. Um, there's no projects on it. So I'll give you guys a little bit of time to do that. Okay. And so what we can do first is check to see our uh, the version of our node modules or our node uh, JS. So we can go here in our terminal and do new terminal. And we can do node space dash V. And we should see a version type here. That means um, it has fully installed in your system. Okay. So if not, then you might have to reinstall Node.js. Okay. But now that we, if you guys have that installed, Oops, sure. Let me share my whole screen. Okay, then we can go back to the Ionic framework. You guys see this? Yeah. Okay, so it says here how to create an app. So now um, let's, um, we're gonna uh, input this command into our terminal, but we're not gonna be creating tabs. We're just gonna make it a simple app and we're gonna use the the blank one, okay? So you guys can just copy And there's it. the side menu one I was talking about earlier where you have like the yeah. hamburger menu where it can slide. Mm -hmm. So down here, we would if we did the tabs, then it would create tabs for us and as well here for the side menu. But in this project, you wanna keep it simple and we'll just do a blank page. So if we go back to Visual Studio's code, and in here, we want to actually change directory into our desktop. So um, right now, I'm not, on, I'm not currently on my desktop. And you want to go to the directory that you want to create your project in. So in the terminal, if I want to go to my desktop, I would do CD, which is change directory. And then I would just type in desktop. And I'm on my desktop. And so what we can just type is ionic start. And we'll just name it my app. And we'll hit enter. Okay, and then once that's done, it'll ask us for a framework that we want to use. We want to use Angular framework. And then we want to do a blank one. So this won't this won't pop up if you already typed in blank when you were typing in the commands for creating a project. Let's play. That's not Override it. Are there other frameworks that you can use for Ionic? Yeah, so right now you can just use um, um, React with it. Um, Vue on their website it says Vue using using the Vue framework um, should be coming soon. So it's pretty versatile. That's cool. Just um, just Angular and React for right now. So let me then we need to CD into the app. Or actually, which is better if we just open, go over here to file, and we will open that project that we just created in our desktop. Okay, uh, um, let's actually let me name it something else. My Ionic app. There we go. Oops. Oops. And we'll name it. All right, next is my Ionic app. Do that again. And then you should start creating a project for you. Okay. Are you guys able to follow me along? Uh, 
I don't know how long this will take, but. And so while it's installing, um, Johnny, you have anything else you want to talk about rewriting Ionic? Johnny, you might be on. Are you talking, Johnny? You're on mute. Sorry about that. So the only thing I would say is um, the documentation is pretty well spelled out as far as all the things you can do. Um, I haven't found anything that I can't, I, that I feel like I, I can't do in Ionic that I can do in a native app. You know, um, when I, I was a web developer first and then I started getting into building mobile apps. I started building native, native mobile apps for like back, back when I was doing like Xcode or not Xcode, but, um, Objective C and using Java for, um, for Angular or for uh, Android apps and Objective C for my, uh, iOS apps. And it was like, I mean, once I picked it up, it was fine. I was able, I was able to do stuff, but it was, it was, it was evolving and changing. And then they got, it got to, got into Swift, and, and then, you know, Android got into, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the one that Angular uses now? Um, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, Kotlin. So, the, Kotlin, yeah. Uh, Kotlin. Yeah. So basically, they. Um, and it's just hard. Like if you don't, it's one of those things, like if you do programming and if you don't do that type of work all the time, you're going to forget it. So, um, and, but I always stuck with web. So I always knew what was happening with web and I was comfortable with it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, I've been trying doing a hybrid. These are called hybrid apps because they're not native apps, um, to the device. They're using the web views. Um, and so I've been doing hybrid apps since like jQuery mobile and Cordova, um, and phone gap. Um, and it all kind of sucked, honestly, none of it was good. Um, they were, it was really buggy. You could tell you were in, you were on a web page as opposed to a native mobile app, even though it would be up in the app store and stuff. Um, you could, you could just tell, and it just, it wasn't rea like the reaction time wasn't good. Um, but then when, when Ionic came around, I was, I was pessimistic about it because I was like, okay, here goes another hybrid app, but I'm like, well, at least it uses Angular, you know, I, I like Angular. So, um, I tried it out and I was really surprised how well it worked. And then I was really surprised how quickly they were releasing updates all the time and, and making it better. And back then they were using, um, for their, their native tools, they were using Cordova, which is basically a library that, that converts some of your web HTML TypeScript code into native, uh, Swift and, or Objective-C Swift and Java and Kotlin. So that's what it, that's how it all works. Um, and it's been around for a long time. It's, it's kind of buggy, you know, it, it's been, it's been around for a long time. There's not, a, there's not a huge, huge following for it. And, um, Ionic for the longest time, that was what they used, but they figured out ways to make it work better. Then last year they came up with, they, they completely kind of left Cordoba and came up with their own. And, and when that happened, everything changed. And so now building these Ionic apps is, so close to native now I, I don't think i'll ever go back to building native apps um because I, I can do i feel like i have more control more confidence in building ionic apps and i haven't found anything that i can't do with ionic app that, that that's done in native i mean i know that there's native things that that are you know people who build those apps are going to say you know there's there's things you can't control and they're right but there's workarounds to get where you want to get and and ultimately, what you can do too is you can actually build native components in and, and link to them through your Ionic app. So there's a way you can you can kind of create a hybrid of both. But um, I love it, and I, I'll I'll never go back to trying to learn to do native apps anymore because I just don't want to keep. I, I can't. My brain's not big enough to remember all that stuff, you know, <laughs> and keep up with all of it. So I just stick with web because it offers more for me, and there's there's more you can do with it and. And if I can do that to build apps, then great. Um, and I do that. And they feel native. And, you know, if you get some of the apps that I can show you that, are like some of the ones I've, I've created, you can't tell they're hybrid apps. They feel like native apps. They move the, the, the touch, the smoothness of it. It all feels native. Um, 
and I and, and I got Joseph working on some apps, some of these apps too, and and I think he's picking it up pretty quick too. So it, there's not a big learning curve from doing web apps to doing mobile apps. Like literally, you could put these in the app store, um, and they look and feel just like like apps you would build and download. Um, you can't tell they're native. There, there's no distinction between the two anymore. And it's getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is taking awfully long. Uh, sorry, guys. I don't know why it's taking so long to, to create this. Are you guys done with all your... Did you guys create the app yet? If you guys are following along. Yeah, so... Um, Romel asked an example of native app. So a native app is basically like a native app is essentially an app that's built in Xcode, which is the which is the software used to build uh, Mac related apps. So Mac OS, iOS, um, Apple Watch, Apple TV. You can build all those apps from Xcode, and and those are called native apps because they're built using Swift, which is this the programming language that Apple uh, wants all their apps built in. And so that's a native app. It's built for specifically those devices using that language. A hybrid app is one that's used building like a, uh, a web language like Angular, which is what he's demonstrated, what we're using with, with Ionic. So it's not built using the native tools for Mac. It's not even, he's not even building this on a Mac. He's doing this on a PC. Um, and so, but what it does is it has uh, in the framework, it has uh, components that will actually compile it to native. So basically it takes these, these, this web code and it converts it to a native app so that you could then, then deploy it on, on uh, iPhones and, and, and Macs or, you know, uh, really iOS, that's it. So anything iOS related, iPads and, and uh, iPhones. And the good thing about it is like, it's, it's like you're doing something you already know. If you're a web developer, you don't have to learn how to be a mobile developer. You just, you're just a web developer and now you can build mobile apps, um, which makes it cool. So. A lot of my friends are like, Oh, you, you have an idea for an app. Talk to Johnny. He knows how to build apps. I'm like, no, really? I don't. They think I'm an app developer, but I'm not. I'm a web developer. I just happen to use Ionic to build my apps and you know they show up in the app store they download them they can use them it's all you know it feels native it feels like you're like it's an app made for the phone but it's not and the good thing about ionic too is you can use the same so once i build it and i get it working the way that he's going to demonstrate it i could take the same code and and compile a ios app and compile an android app without changing any code before i would have to write a version for 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 iPhone, and then I have to write a completely different version for Android. Well, with a, with a hybrid app, you don't have to do that anymore. I could just build one one app, one code, and be able to push it out to iOS and, and Android using the same code, and it looks and feels exactly the same on both devices. Okay, so let's see. Feel Man, like Joe, you're still going? Yeah, I don't know. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go to my other computer and just share that one because I have it up there. And um, we'll just talk it through there. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, i never seen it take this long. Yeah, because mine's already, I ran the Ionic serve already. Yes. Yeah, so, so you see it? You part. see it already on your side? Well, it hasn't started up yet, but it's going through all the like compiling and everything. Yeah, but you, uh, as far as when you created the app, because this is just barely creating it. Uh, yeah, so mine created it. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Well, I also have a decently fast computer, so. So oh, let me let me stop sharing and let me go to my other one. Yeah, these things happen, you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. It's all part of what uh, development. Okay, so let's do this a little differently. Let, um, so I'll just guide you guys through um, how to create this app with it already done. And I'll just go through each one and I'll show you guys, I'll explain what's going on through each step. 
So I think that'll be a lot easier. I think we lost a lot of time with that. So. Okay. So if I. Okay. All right. So, uh, can you guys see this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you start out, yeah. okay. So when you start out with your app, um, it might feel a little overwhelming because there's a lot of files and a lot of folder structures to uh, Angular, but um, to, so that we don't get too flustered, we're only going to be talking about the files and the folder structures that we will be using. So, um, do you guys have something like this? Uh, so, um, in this case, we will be going into SRC and in app and inside home. And this is where we're mostly going to be working. So it doesn't get too confusing, okay? So you guys all have the home part, I'm assuming. And inside here, we have our routing modules, our home module TS. We're mostly gonna be focusing on three files, which is HTML, SCSS, and TypeScript. So um, Angular uses TypeScript and um, HTML, and you can also choose SCSS, but um, through Ionic, it already created the SCSS file for you. Um, so SCSS is just the same as um, CSS, if you guys are a little confused, if you guys have never used SCSS before, it works the same way, it just has a little more features to it. Same thing with TypeScript, it's, it compiles down to JavaScript and it is just a better version of it. And let's see, so we'll start off with our HTML page. So in our HTML page, um, mine might look a little different than yours. Um, so it does have the ion content and the ion header as well. Oh, sorry. The ion header, the ion content, and we're gonna have an ion footer. So we'll go through each step at one at a time. So let's talk about ion headers. So you can think of an ionic project having kind of three main layers, which is the header, the content, and down here, the footer. So if we go to our app here, this would be up here. This would be the header. Down here would be the content. And this would be considered the footer. And so inside the footer, there is an ion tool, tool um, toolbar. And ion, ion toolbar, second. So the ion toolbar is the one that holds um, the header or the, or the header is the one that holds the ion toolbars, which uh, holds the title of our page. And in the ion content, we also have a container here, and this is where we will be doing most of our coding, right? And so in here, we can, once, um, uh, we haven't served it yet, so we can't really see what's, uh, what's going on. But if, if you guys type in ion or ionic serve and hit enter, it will actually build and serve your app for you, and it will run it in um, I think I already have 8100 open. So whichever port it is, and it will open um, um, a website for you to actually look at what your what the app looks like. And any changes that you make will be uh, changed in real time in the actual application. So if I share my screen here. So this is what it looks like now. And then if I were to change this who is paying, okay. 
and we have I'm paying. Didn't serve yet. So what would happen is this would change in real time and it would update the actual application itself. Okay. All right. And so in the in the ion <clears throat> in the um, in the container here. We see that it already created an ID for us. And if we go to SCSS here, it will show us all these classes that, or these, um, these IDs that uh, were already created for us. And mine might look different from yours. Um, what I would do is, I think you guys have the 50% one. I don't remember which one it was. It has the 50% on it. Um, I want you guys to kind of copy what I have here so that our app runs uh, properly. And, and it should be in the home page that CSS, uh, CSS, same folder as home. Once you guys have that. Okay. And in here, you guys um, know about H1 tags if you were in um, Daniel's meetup last last two weeks. Um, you should know about H1 tags, and this is just gonna where we're gonna put the title, which is add names, so that you know that you would add names in these labels. And then also we have a tag here that is ion item, and these tags are specific to ionic. Um, although they are specific to Ionic, you can still use the regular HTML tags here as well. Um, it just helps Ionic kind of read the code a little bit better with its own tags. And so in Ionic yeah, tag... Yeah, and with those with those Ionic tags too, it already has like uh, uh, classes and themes that you can use uh, for colors of labels and background and all that stuff. So if you use those, there's a... There's some there's some global uh, CSS or CCS, CSS files that you can um, edit to change some of those colors and things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so they're essentially uh, uh, Angular Ionic components, right? Like their I their component library. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. and and they're all, they're responsive in that way, so they work with the different screens, iPad, you know, Android, iPhone. Um, but yeah, they're all they're all tied to different things. And in an ion item tag, uh, that is where we're going to be putting our ion inputs. So if you guys have used inputs before in HTML, that's where you type in actual text, and uh, that's what. Um, let me show you guys. So it would be. It would be here. So we can just type things and that would be our ion input. And if we go back to our code, um, I added a label here so that we know that this, in, this ion input, this input, you have to type in a name. And at the very bottom of the ion items, we create an ion button. So in an ion button, um, we added some, uh, some uh, properties to it with uh, the expand at full property. Um, you can actually expand the button all the way from edge to edge, from left, from left to right, all the way across the screen. That's what the full stands for. And in here, I'll go over this later. And this would be the name of the actual button. Okay. And then after that, we go here down to the H1 tag. And we create another participant. And in there, we also are uh, below it, we also have ion items. And inside those ion items, we are going to create an ion grid. So if you guys have used uh, other frameworks like Bootstrap. Um, it also shows you guys how to use grids. Um, so grids are pretty much a way for you to organize 
um, the structure and the data of the content in your in your um, app by sectioning them into uh, more manageable areas. So in this case, so it's um, like rows and columns, basically. Yeah. So he, he's setting up right here. You can see he's creating a grid, and in the grid he has a row. He has one row in there, but you, you can have multiple rows. You can have columns. You can do a whole bunch. It depends on how you want it to look. Yep. And so um, in this way, we are going to, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so in this row, we have a column here. So pretty much it's, it's rows, like going from left to right and columns, which go from up to down. And in our ion column here, we have a P tag. And you guys know the paragraph tag. And in here, this is where we're gonna be putting our participants. And I'll, I'll get into this a little in a little bit. And at the very end of this ionic item, we will be adding another H1 tag, and it will be called, uh, the title will be take out your wallet. And in this H2 tag, that is where we're gonna be putting the name of the actual person that gets chosen, okay? And then that is the end of the content, of the ion content. In here on the bottom, we have our ion footer, and in our ion footer, that's where it holds an ion toolbar. And in that ion toolbar, that is where we're gonna put our button where we can actually choose um, uh, a participant. So that would be here. That would be our button, okay? So now that we have the structure of the HTML side, um, Let's go to the TS side and let's put some logic into this uh, app. So if you guys had copied this down, uh, you might get some errors here. It's because we might not have created those functions yet. And that's what we're gonna be doing in our home.page.ts. Am I sharing the right screen? No, I am not. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, you might have some errors here if you guys copy this. And this just means that we haven't created these functions yet, okay? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going to our home.page.ts and we will be creating our functions. So if we click on home.page.ts, there is gonna look like this, but without all these functions in it and these properties, okay? And so let's start with um, this class right here. So this is where we're gonna be doing most of our work. And um, this class is going to hold all of our logic. So this is uh, this class homepage is pretty much just an object. And what it has is we were going to name we are going to do a name, participants, and chosen name as our properties. So this name this will be the name that is inside the input box or where we, where we typed in the name. Okay, this participants. It's gonna is gonna contain a string, which a string is just um, is a type of text. It's a type of what is it? String is a, a type in uh, TypeScript where it just stores a type of text. So there are other types such as a number, a boolean, which stores a true and a or true or false value. But in this case, we are gonna have a string. So uh, this little uh, bracket here, it means that it's gonna be an array of strings and we just set it to an empty array. So you can think of an array as a list. So pretty much um, it's gonna populate in here, all of our names. So we can do, let's say if we added my name, which is Joe, it will look like this. And then let's say we added another name, let's say Mark, it will look like that. And then if we added another name, say Johnny, it'll look like that. So it looks like a list. So that's what you can think of an array is pretty much it's a list. Okay. And then down there, our chosen name, our chosen name will store um, who the actual person that was actually chosen, okay? And just below our constructor, that is where we're gonna start creating our functions. So in here, 
um, we are going to start by naming our func first function, which is add participant. And we're going to put this parentheses to make it a function. And then we're going to put a, a square bracket or a cur curly bracket like this. And once you guys have created this, we're going to hit enter. Okay. And that's going to open it up. And once it's opened up, we are going to write our first if statement. So if this dot name, meaning if there is, if the user actually puts a name, then they can do this, um, this process. This uh, if statement is so it can prevent them from submitting an empty name. So if we didn't have this, then they can technically submit an empty string over and over again, which will mess up our code. Okay. So this is what this is all saying. So if, if there is a name there, um, I want you to take the participant list and I want you to push the name in. So this function dot push, all it's doing is it's taking the name, which is this dot name, and it's just adding it into the list. That's what this function is for. So every time that they add a name, every time that they hit the add participant button, or if they hit the add button and they'll uh, execute this function, it will add the name into the list. And then this is just so that it clears the name. And once it clears the name, we can type in a new name. So that, that's, all, that's all this is saying, okay? So with that function out of the way, and we'll go to the next one, which is a delete function. So this means if we go to our app here, I'll show you what that's doing. Let's just type in some random text here. And if we click on one of them, am I sharing that screen? Yeah. If we click on one of them, they will start to disappear. So that is what that function is doing in our app, okay? So what it's doing is, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how this works in, in a little bit uh, when we go to the HTML side. But on the TS side, it's gonna take i, and i represents index. So when you go through an array, each, each element or each item in the array has a certain index. So let's say if I had Joe here, and then mark again, oops. So in this list, this position or what we call index, this would be index zero and mark over here would be index one. So in arrays, it starts at zero and not one. So that's also really important. So this would be zero, one, if you add another one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So what's it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the current index of the participant that we selected. So if we selected mark, that will turn into index one, because that is in position one. And then what it's doing is it's gonna go through the list again, and it's going to splice it. So uh, this function, what it does is it takes in, in this case, it takes in two arguments. Okay, the first argument would be the actual index. So the position where you want to delete. And this, um, uh, this argument, uh, what it's doing is it's telling you how many you want to take out. So let's say if I click on mark, which is on index one, I just want to take out one element. And if I click on Joe, that's going to be index zero. And then I just want to take out one element. So that's how we are doing the whole delete participant process. Okay. And uh, I'll show you guys how that works in the HTML side once we get there. And then next, our next function is the random, um, the randomized names. So in this function, we are going to be randomizing the names and we will be picking the actual participant. So on this first line right here, if you guys have used JavaScript before then, um, and you, you guys should be familiar with these functions here. 
So we are creating, we are declaring this variable random number. And we are going to be using math.form, math.random, and multiplying it by the participants.length. So let's start with math.random. So what math.random does is it selects a number, uh, a random number between 0 and 1, which doesn't include 1. And in order for you to get an actual whole number or an actual number that is in a decimal, you would need to multiply it with another number. Let's say that you want to choose a random number between 1 and 0 or 0 and 10. You want to multiply this by, oops, you want to multiply this by 10. So if you want this to choose a random number between 0 and 10, you would want to multiply by 10. So in this case, we are multiplying this dot participants dot length. So dot length, all it's doing is it's going into the participants array and it's counting how many elements are in there. So in this case, this partic this dot participants dot length would equal two because there are two elements in there. And depending on how many elements that you put in there, this will continuously be changing, right? So pretty much if we want a number to generate from zero to however many, we need to multiply it with an actual number. So this actually gives us a decimal and we don't want a decimal to return to us. So what we do is we do a math.floor, which kind of rounds it to the lowest um, whole number. So let's say we have a 4.5. What math.floor will do is it will round it to a four. Even if we did a 4.9, it will still round it to a four. Um, imagine it being the floor, being the lowest point. So it will always round downwards to the nearest whole number. So with that, we can get a random number from zero to one. So with that, every time they hit the randomize function, it will either generate a zero or a one in this case. And then what we're doing here on the second line is we are getting this property and we are putting a value in it. So the value would be this dot participants and this bracket and random number inside. So what this means is we are gonna be going through this array. And to go through the array, you need to um, put it in brackets. So let's say, let's have an array here. So in this context, you would put the array, um, you would put brackets after the, uh, the variable array name, and inside you would put which index you want to get. So let's say if I did array, the array name, and put zero in it, I would be technically be getting Joe. If I wanted Mark, I would switch this over to a one, and so on and so forth. So what this is doing is it's taking that random number that we got and it's placing it in here. And then if let's say that random number is a one, then Mark would be put in chosen name. And that chosen name is what, would, is what we will be displaying to the view, okay? Everybody good so far? Felt like I was rambling a lot. All right, so let's go on with our last function here. So our last function um, would be the reset function. So all this does is it resets everything for us. Um, the first line here is this dot participants, which is our array, which is our list, and it will set it back to an empty array. So it will kind of clear the slate of the array so that there's nothing in it. And this dot chosen name, what uh, this does is uh, it's going to take the property of the of the chosen name and it's going to set it to an empty string. So in short, it's going to clear out the name. And same thing with the name of our inputs. It's also going to uh, clear out the name if it previously had a name on it. And that's pretty much all our functions that we're going to need for this app to work. 
So if we go back to, let's see if I can split this up. Okay, cool. Uh, can you guys see this split? Yeah. All right. So we're back on our HTML side. So what we're going to do is we're going to start adding our functions. So for the first one, we'll add, we'll put the um, add participant function in our button. So we're going to start by putting a, a click event. So this is um, an event that gets triggered once this button is clicked. So uh, the syntax for it is like this, where we put it in uh, parentheses and we put the word click on it and set it equal to the actual function that we wanted to run and make sure to add the quotes. So once they hit this button, it's going to go into here and it's going to perform this, uh, these steps. So this is actually pushing the name that we entered into our list or our array. Now, in order to actually put a name on here, we need to use something called an ng model. Now, an ng model is a two-way binding in where you can start typing on the input, and then it will automatically, in real time, actually update the value of this property. So you don't have to save it or anything. You don't have to run a, an extra function. So when you start typing in, let's say, you start typing in on the input Joe, you start typing in a J, it will save here a J and then O and then E. So it's kind of real time changes on when you're using an ng model. So this is how we're taking our name that we entered and, and storing it into this property here. Okay. And with that, we can go on to our next one, our next function, which is our delete. So uh, let's uh, not worry about this for right now. So if we click on the actual participant's name, then it will trigger this uh, click event and it will delete that actual name. So if we go to this column right here, we see that um, we used, uh, this is called an Angular directive. And what this does, if you guys are familiar with JavaScript using ng ng fours or ng ofs, it's it's or uh, sorry for ofs and uh, for loops, it's uh, pretty much the same as a, a for of. So we start by calling an ng four an asterisk ng four and setting it equal to quotes. Uh, declare the variable let participant of participants. So if we look back here, participants is our array and or our list. And what ng4 is doing is it's going through each element of that array. So let's see if this was Joe again and Mark. What it's going to do is it's going to go through this array and it will take Joe and put it into this variable right here. So the, uh, the first time, the first time it loops through this array is going to be Joe. So participant, what's inside this variable right here would be Joe. And so it will display Joe here. So this over here, this is called interpolation. So it's a way for, um, it's a way for us to use Angular in where we can actually do a lot of stuff uh, with the HTML side. But in this case, what we're doing is we're taking a variable and putting it into the HTML and actually displaying the value of that variable. So in this, uh, on the first run, on the first loop, participant will be Joe. So it will, uh, it will display Joe here. And what it's doing is it's creating another, uh, another ion column you can't really see it, um, how it's happening, but what it's actually doing in G4, it's, it's creating, once it's created, um, once it went through the first, um, 
first array, it will create another ion column and now use mark and put it in participant and then place this on the second ion column. So it would technically look like this. Okay. No, let's do it the old way. So it would look. It would look like this. So it would have Joe here. And it would have Mark here. So that's what uh, the NG4 is doing. It's creating another uh, ionic call and everything inside it. And then displaying the, the correct data that you loop through. Okay. All right, and these are just some of the classes like ion padding to the top, which adds 16 pixels to the top, ion padding bottom, which adds 16 pixels to the bottom. And this text center I'm not actually using. So um, I Ionic also has their own uh, uh, default classes that already has um, that you can use right away off of the box. You don't have to, um, you don't have to go to your CSS and manually create classes. It already has classes for you. So um, Ionic has a, a bunch of classes that you can use. So you don't have to actually write the SCSS code for it. Okay. And then the next part is right here. All we're doing is once we click on the button right here we are going to be placing, or let's go down here. Once we click the button to choose, it's gonna randomize. And in here, we are going to take the participant that we chose and place it into this chosen name right here. So once we click this, it will automatically display the name that we randomized. So we're also using interpolation here. Okay, and that is the end of the ion content. Now, if we're gonna go to the footer part, it's pretty much the same thing that we did up here. So it is a function that we uh, that we are calling and we are calling the, the event here, which is a click event, and we're setting it to the function that we wanna use. So in this case, we want to use the randomized function what we did before and it'll randomize as our name and spit it back out here. So that's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, we also did use expand property here as well. Um, if we want to set the color of the button, we can use this, um, uh, this property, which is color and set it equal to a color that, um, that uh, Ionic provided for us. So success, means it's the color green. So if we go back to our button, you'll see that it is color green. And if you don't put a color, it will be default, it will be defaulted to blue. Okay. And so that is pretty much what our app is doing. Um, I wish I could have coded it with you guys, but it seemed like um, I had a lot of issues on my side. Sorry about that. But um, you can actually um, run this list. So let's try actually using our app here. So if you look here, you see how the name would show up here and it would go up like that. So that function is done by See here, right here. So it uses the position and it uses floating. So if we take out this in our code and we go back to our application, you see that it's just standard there and it doesn't move. So I just wanted to add that little functionality to it. So it's kind of, the animation is a lot cooler to do. So let's set that back to empty. Right, and see, it's it's 
as I'm coding on the Visual Studio's code, it's automatically uploading or updating on my app. And that is also being done because I'm on auto save. Once you save, it automatically builds it out for you and serves it. So let's create our app here, or let's start using our app. So let's start by putting my name. Let's do another mark. And another Johnny. Let's add more, let's add Daniel in here. And let's add, let's add Matt. And you see how it's listing it out for us. So this is pretty much what our array would look like or what our array does look like. It's just a list. And then once we choose, it's saying that Matt, you have to pay dinner. Um, doesn't matter, you get to decide which restaurant we eat in. So this is just a fun little app that uh, I thought would be fun to, to show on a meetup. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any other questions, you know, feel free to ask. And Johnny could answer some questions as well. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so you guys have any questions? So I just encourage you all to um, really go through to, you can go step-by-step step through the documentation. It'll walk you through building an app. They'll even set up template apps. Like if you do a side menu, it's like an email app that they send up, that they set up right away that has like an inbox, an outbox, um, which shows you how they pull lists and stuff. Um, if you've done any Angular work and you've connected to like APIs, you can do the same in here. You can do a, a, a call to an API and get data and list that data out. Um, that's what I do for most of the apps that, that I, that I build. Um, I actually do API calls and, um, I, I, um, will pull populate lists, uh, from the Ionic lists and I'll do, um, let's see, I'll, I'll populate lists, I'll populate content. Um, I mean, I just do it all through the API, so. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, is there a way I can connect to my machine? Let me see. Actually, I'm gonna. I'm on. I'm actually on. I'm thinking my iPad, so I couldn't do it if I wanted to. Let's see here. And let's see. Yeah, so we could do a more advanced one like that that connects to an API, but it's the same process as you do with um, with uh, with Angular. So, you know, you have an API call, you get a list, and then you, you do a, like a, a for loop in your HTML. Right, so, um, but this is just the front end of, of the app. So to do a full stack app is just really, that would require the API part, which is not really, tied to Ionic, you know, it's more so an API is an API, you know, the main thing is you want the app to be able to access those, that data from the API. Um, so yeah, if you, if you download like the, the Scratch Vision app and it says, it should say like DJ Scratch and he's like a, a guy from New York, um, and you'll see all the data that gets pulled from there and all the features, that's all just done through Ionic. I also have push notifications set up on there, so you can do push notifications. Um, there's a bunch of audio content on there, video content, um, a whole bunch of stuff, and all that stuff is coming from the, from APIs. And so, um, let's see if I have it on here. And it's on both Android and iPhone. And, it, and that's again, that's one code base. So I created the app using what what Joe just demonstrated here, and then I just I just did a um, Ionic um, platform add and added iOS and then Ionic platform add and added Android. And then I was able to um, build it just, to, there's like a build command to, for, for those platforms. 
and then um, I create the package and I can submit it to the app stores. So there's a section called featured mixes and all this is pulling from an API. So he adds one on there and automatically, it automatically uh, puts it in there. Upcoming events, all this stuff is coming from the API. His biography all comes from the API. So in his, in his app, I'm using image backgrounds. You know, just like how Joe has a black, black dark background, I just put some CSS to add an image to the background. Um, so yeah, there's tons of, this one I'm using some plugins, um, Ionic plugins, there's one called Audio Player. So that's the audio, that how the, how the audio is played. I just, I just use an MPN package to add that. There's the video player, I just use an MP, MPN package for that. And then there's something called um, social, um, social sharing plugin, it's an MPN package. So basically how that works is um, you create a button and on a click, on a click, you, um, you, you're able to uh, make it connect to social media. So if, if, if you wanna share it on, your, you wanna share it with the text, if you wanna share it on Facebook, if you wanna share it on Instagram or Twitter, it does it all for you. Basically, you click the button and then it'll automatically open up those apps and copy and paste the stuff from the, that you want uh, copied um, into those apps. So, I mean, they have, they have something for everything. For his events, there's a plugin to add it to your calendar on your device. I mean, there's so many plugins that do so many things. You can see there's a plugin section too. Um, there's so many plugins that do everything you need for for the apps. So you don't have to recreate a bunch of stuff. And, and it's getting bigger and bigger as more of the community gets involved in supporting these apps. There's just more and more plugins that do so many different things. Um, if I look through my list, let's see what else I have on here that I use. Uh, yeah, so social share. There's an email. Um, there's an email plugin. So when you click email, it, it pops up your, your email prompt. It already fills everything out. There is an in-app something called in-app browser. So when I click on that, it opens up a link inside of the app, so you can see it in in a browser inside the app. It doesn't take you actually to the to uh, to the Safari or Google browser. Um, yeah, there's just so many things that. Uh, if you just go through the list, there's just so many different plugins that you can use. Um, clipboard app, if you want to copy and paste, you want to automatically copy things, there's a clipboard app. There's all kinds of alert features, um, you know, logins. You can customize the splash screen. You can customize the status bar. You can, you can check on the network. So there's a plugin where you can detect if they're on Wi-Fi, if they're on... Um, you know, if, if they're on their, their phone connection, you have access to all that. Um, so you could just do so much with it. And um, it just takes a while playing around with it. And you can build some very sophisticated apps uh, using this. So, and if we get the request later, uh, we could do a more advanced session where we get into some of those real complex like plugins and, and actually like deploying an app. So I can show you how you take an app that you build and then how do you put it into the app store or how do you put it in Google play? Um, and there's a, there's some commands you run to do that. There's also commands you can run to, to run it in the simulators. So you can see how it looks on an iPhone, how it looks on an Android device um, and how you add different devices to, to test on. So I think, I think that's it. I think we, we covered everything. So, um, and then any other questions, go ahead and post it in the chat. We'll monitor it for, you know, the next few minutes. And if that's it and uh, nothing pops up, then we'll go ahead and end this. So thanks, Joseph, for doing that. I appreciate it. Um, I know we had some bugs, but I think you walked through it pretty good. So, um, I, you know, I was able to follow along. And if I were to be creating it, even if you weren't doing it, I could still follow what was going on. But again, I go back to the documents and then is this in GitHub somewhere? Oh, we can add it to GitHub. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll add it to GitHub so you guys have a, a, a code, all the examples to all the code. And then you can just pull that repo down or copy and paste it as you want as you go through the tutorial as well. Um, and so that'll give you everything you need for this app that he's demonstrated today. Cool. All right, well, we. We appreciate everyone tuning in. And uh, for those of you who are work for CodeStack or go to school with CodeStack, thank you. For those of you that don't, 
um, join the family. You know, we're doing, uh, we're, we're actively trying to get uh, new recruits into the program right now uh, because school's going to be coming up around the corner. And so we're going to get started. So don't miss your window because the next one doesn't come up for next year till next year. So, all right. Cool, everyone. Um, I think we're going to end this. So who's in charge of running the, the Zoom? Uh, that'd be me. So Okay. And then you, you, these get recorded, right? So we have a recording of these as well. Yeah, the, this is recorded. Perfect. All right. Great. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll put this up on our site as well so that you have access to the recorded one. And then Joe's going to work on uh, the repository for this. Where do we put the where do we put the repo link? Have we done that for other other uh, other one meetups? Um, I think we put the repo link in the uh, and I think it's just one repository with a bunch of different branches. Ah, perfect. Okay, yeah. So we'll put it in there, and then um, if you need access to the link, just go ahead and email somebody or contact us. You can contact us even through Meetup, and uh, we'll provide you with the link to get access to all these. Uh, all these uh, sessions that we're doing so you can have access to all the code for all of our sessions. All right, cool. Thanks everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good evening.